Hello everybody, Ben Woodruff here with another falconry video. Today's video is going to be on the black and white hawk eagle, which is the smallest of the New World hawk eagles and really a beautiful bird and a very exciting one to teach about. Now the video you're about to see is actually clipped from a long form video I did covering all the New World hawk eagles. But I figure some people might wanna learn just about the species. So I've separated out with, and I'm recording this as a different intro and exit. Uh, so if during the video it sounds a little odd if I'm referencing other things in the video, that's why. It's because I'm cutting this out of, a, out of a longer video. But again, this is the video to learn about the black and white hawk eagle. The black and white hawk eagle is a very striking looking bird. Now on the conservation list, it's listed as a species of least concern currently, but its numbers are still in question. It lives throughout southeastern Mexico, Central America, and South America, and the population estimates currently are from 20,000 individuals to 50,000 individuals. This species lives at an elevation from zero to 5,000 feet, which uh, is getting some proper height there. And again, this is a neotropical bird, so it's dealing with temperatures that are quite hot and quite humid. Of all the New World hawk eagles, the black and white hawk eagle is the smallest. In fact, a uh, female typically only weighs about 850 grams. You know, that's like the size of a red-tailed hawk and not even a big red-tailed hawk. Uh, when we, when we, when we when, when, when you say hawk eagle, you're picturing enormous. Uh, this is a large bird, but it's, it, it came from much larger lineages. <clears throat> this bird is booted like all true hawk eagles, which means it has feathers going all the way down its legs, just like a golden eagle. And it is a distant cousin of golden eagles as well. This um, has a wingspan of 53 inches, which is about four feet, four inches. So it's got a pretty sizable wingspan. So that would be, again, even bigger, even though it's maybe the size of a red-tailed hawk, the wingspan is on average uh, a fair amount bigger than a red-tailed hawk would be. It forms a sister clade with the other Spizatus species. And again, the Spizatus is going to be this bird, the black and white hawk eagle, the black hawk eagle, the ornate hawk eagle, and the isidore's eagle. It forms a sister clade with those other three. However, the black and white hawk eagle is the furthest branch off. In other words, of those four birds, it branched off earliest of the other three and went off and did its thing. And it shows visually, this bird looks quite a bit different. It's very pale, it's very white. Um, the eyes are, you know, has these big dark eyes, these dark patches around the eyes. It's almost completely white, but it has a crest. And you, to see it from above, you can see it. It's these little black feathers, this little boop, 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 kind of a sissy version of a crest compared to the other hawk eagles. But nevertheless, it is a crest and it is still there, it is present. Um, this species is uh, proportionately the largest, most broad-winged of all the Spizatus genus. So in other words, of all the New World hawk eagles, for its size and weight, it has the broadest wings. All of these, all of these New World hawk eagles can soar, but the black and white hawk eagle is most built for it. All of the New World hawk eagles like dense forest, but this likes it least dense of all, even though it still likes it dense. It lives in the dense, humid lowland forests. It's not usually seen above 4,000 feet. It will si sometimes hunt in the South American savannas, but for the most part, it likes the, those more dense, humid forests. It will hunt from a soar, and that's usually where it is seen, which is a little different than the other hawk eagles of the New World. So in other words, it will dive in through the canopy, which takes tremendous reactionary time. The ability to fly above a canopy of trees, look down in it, see prey, and be able to dive through without hitting a branch or crashing is pretty impressive. So again, they have those broader wings for a hawk eagle to be able to do that, but they have incredible, um, incredible response time. Now, compared to the other hawk eagles, this bird is incredibly pale. One of the uh, beliefs why that is, is because it likes to soar in the open. 
where most of the other hawk eagles are more prone to be flying beneath the canopy or just be still hawking in the canopy looking through the branches at what you're going after so shadows are beneficial this bird is more prone to fly out in the open so if you're in the open if you have the if you're if you are if you if you are prey if you are a prey species and you are under the canopy that means your pupils have enlarged to be able to let more light in so you can see so if you look up at the sky through the canopy the sky doesn't look blue the sky looks white piercingly white it's bright it's, it's hard to look at the sun so if you have a piercingly white hawk eagle that that's going to appear the same color. So that is the reason why the black and white hawk eagle is so pale compared to all the other hawk eagle species in the new world because it is primarily a sore hawker, but then will just shoot and dive in through the trees. It's pretty interesting. They hunt a wide range of mammals such as squirrels, really big giant red-tailed squirrels and opossums. They hunt a wide range of opossums as well. Um, they also hunt a large number of tropical birds. They hunt toads and lizards and snakes. They do not do well uh, with a fragmentation of habitat. So you, some birds do. If you have birds like a red-tailed hawk, which we have here locally in my area, red-tailed hawks, uh, same thing with our Swainson's hawks. Anywhere there's a little skiff of land, they'll go there and they'll go hunt. They'll find whatever rodents or whatever insects are there, and then they'll just fly over the neighborhoods and fly over the big old huge buildings to the next little tiny patch of open land and hunt it. These black and white hawk eagles do not do well with that. They kind of need uninterrupted habitat and they tend to disappear if it gets interrupted. Uh, having researched this, it sounds very similar to locally how it is with our ferruginous hawks in North America. Ferruginous hawks are, are, are larger than red-tailed hawks but they do not adapt well like the red tails do. If you fragment up, if you have a bunch of farmland and they're on and you put like a house in the middle of that farmland, they're out of there, they're gone. They do not like it. Ferruginous hawks do not adapt well to habitat disruption and neither do black and white hawk eagles. Um, this is a species that uh, the nesting details are incredibly scarce for being pretty common in the numbers and being conservation listed as a species of least concern. It's kind of surprising that we have so little uh, nesting information on them. We do know that strangely, the juveniles pretty much look like the adults. This is not normal with any raptor species and especially not with the hawk eagles. If you look at the other new world hawk eagles, the other neotropical hawk eagles, the, the juveniles look very different. And for most hawk eagles, it takes four or five years to reach your adult colors. Not so with the black and white hawk eagle, it pretty much has these pale colors in the beginning. Uh, it is true that on uh, the juveniles, there's, there's pale ends on the upper wing coverts. It's a little bit different. There's some grayish feathers on the back that are a little more grayish uh, in the juveniles. Um, kind of strange. But again, the assumption is that why this is, is because they rely on their ability to blend in with the sky for, for a prey animal looking up through the canopy and having to squint and they're looking up, they need to be that pale to begin with in order to be able to successfully hunt from a sore and then diving in through that dense human neotropical canopy. So, it, so it's a rare instance where first year birds and adults are pretty much the same color. Now. This coloration is interesting because it very closely looks similar to a species called a black-faced hawk. Now, a black-faced hawk is much smaller, incredibly smaller. And the thinking is that probably the black-faced hawk being smaller had developed its colors through convergent evolution to try to mimic the larger black and white hawk eagle. So from a distance, you, you see that you're like, oh, I'm not going to mess with it and they, they have very similar coloration patterns. We have the same thing happen also with the gray-bellied hawk. The gray-bellied hawk is, you know, a pretty standard sized hawk, but as a juvenile, as a first year bird, its colorations look insanely close to that of the much larger adult ornate hawk eagle. So if you look at the colors of an ornate hawk eagle, they're pretty distinct and an ornate hawk eagle is a powerful bird that's a force to be reckoned with. And so if you're a gray-bellied hawk and your first year birds look like this much larger, more powerful uh, raptor species, 
then hey, you're less likely to be messed with. So that's what we think is also going on with the blackface hawk is that it is trying to mimic the much larger black and white hawk eagle. We have this kind of thing happen in nature. The black and white hawk eagle is a beautiful and incredible species. And, uh, but again, the smallest member of all the new world hawk eagles. Well, I hope you enjoyed learning about the black and white hawk eagle. Again, it's uh, of all the New World hawk eagles, it is the oddest. It's the strangest, both in forms of its coloration and the way it hunts and the shape of its wings. It's quite a unique species, and I hope having this video out there makes it more able for more people to do more research and get more videos out themselves so we can learn more and share more about this beautiful species. Uh, if you haven't already, if you could hit subscribe to my channel, I really appreciate it. If you want to support me on Patreon, the link is down below in the description, and I will also put in the description a link to the long form video where I cover all the new world hawk eagles. But I hope you enjoyed this video, and as always, happy hawking. Thank you.